Oh. <laughs> Give me that. Sit. 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 Yes. Good boy. Yeah. He anticipates. Look at that. Oh, Cooper, sit. Yes. Good, Good boy. Sit. Yes. <laughs> Get him, Coop. Get him, Coop. What's up and welcome to today's video. I'm excited to share this video with you guys today because number one, Cooper's in it and he's just the cutest dog in the whole world. And I'm so excited to show you guys him. I'm gonna insert some clips here of what we did over vacation. Um, we were in West Virginia with Brian's family for the holidays, Thanksgiving. We almost gave Cooper to a sitter because we literally didn't know we were gonna get him and we didn't know that we could fly with him, but we got him emotionally support certified and I do have anxiety, so it went well and it is 100% legal. I went to this website below, certapet.com um, to get the emotional support certification paper from a psychologist. So he got to fly on the plane and sit on our lap. He was so good on the plane and we got to know him, get to know him so well and he's growing and he knows how to do sit and he's just, the best, he's so cute. Uh, Moving forward, got back home and super excited to just get back to work and like, I feel so recharged from the holidays. I don't know about you guys. I got lots of good food in me, sweet potato casserole, turkey, apple pie, pumpkin pie, all, all of the foods and it was just amazing and delicious. Um, if you guys are still struggling with Thanksgiving food stuff, just go ahead and get back on track. Like, get back to the way that you know how to eat. It might seem complicated in your head, but you know what? It's simple for most of you, for like general population. Just get back to eating normal and your body will just level out. My body's already like back to normal. I didn't do anything crazy. I didn't do any extra cardio. I didn't lower my calories after Thanksgiving. Absolutely nothing. I just got back to normal. I didn't restrict carbs, just didn't restrict fats. I did nothing differently. Just got back on it and my body's like, hey, cool, you're good. One day didn't kill you. And it's actually magical what can happen when you just don't think about it and go back to normal. Your body will re-regulate. And without you stressing about it, stress increases your cortisol and then your body gets even more inflamed and it's just not good. So take it from someone who has tracked macros on Thanksgiving, overate on Thanksgiving and continue to overeat. You know, I did all of the things in my time. Like I've done everything I've tracked and been really strict and I've also just been completely off the rocker and this was the first year that I've been good. Um, but this video is just a quick update about that along with something that I think is gonna be really helpful to a lot of you guys who are focusing on your business, especially like it's December, so business does get a little slower, but it is a really, really good thing to like focus on the structure of your business, you know, focusing on serving your clients, focusing on planning out for 2018, really exciting things, especially in January for most fitness people. Um, in the industry, it's like when business starts booming and December just freaking sucks for most people because most people are just with their families, holidays, relaxing, not really wanting to start a fitness journey right now. Or, you know, some people are really excited about keeping like on track for the month of December because that's when people gain the most weight throughout the year. Either way, I figured it'd be really helpful to show you guys like what the structure of my business looks like and to explain to you guys how it actually works so you can think about how it might be beneficial to you in the future to build a team out or outsource and get help from other people um, and just structure your business a little bit differently so it's just set up and organized. This has taken me all year with the help of a couple of business mentors and coaches. You guys know I work with Lewis and Sterling along with my online business manager, Selena, that I hired this year. I'll talk to you guys about her and a couple of other different people just helping me organize my business who are very business savvy. And it's helped me learn a lot about business this year just by doing that in and of itself. So it's been really amazing. Um, and I really wanna show you guys how it looks. So when I first started business, I literally, a me Amanda right here, posted on Instagram, got clients for my fitness coaching business. And that was it. That was my structure of my business. There was literally nothing else. Then I decided to start YouTube, implemented YouTube. So it was me posting on Instagram, me make a YouTube video, me get some clients. 
And then it started to turn into get some clients, but also get sponsorships. And there was my business. And that was the structure. There was nothing else, nobody else. It was just me, solo printer over here doing everything on my own. And it worked really, really, really well for about a year and a half, two years or so. And a lot of people still do that. For me, I was starting to feel really overwhelmed. I knew I had so much more to give. I knew I had so much more of an impact to make. And I knew I could reach so much more people if I wasn't doing all of these other things that I wanted to do within the business. Like there are so many things that my business currently does that I don't specifically do. And because of that, I'm able to spend more time, you know, doing my podcast, actually interacting with my clients, not making that much more YouTube videos. And I'll show you guys why specifically with all the other things going on. And I'm gonna get back to it once a few more things are automated or just moving forward with different employees, contractors, or systems. But I'm gonna show you guys a little bit about what it looks like. So the first person that I have underneath me, her name is Selena, and she is a technically an online business manager, but I would also call her a business partner, a business strategist, she's a consultant. She does so much stuff with me and for me. I essentially pay her to manage, you know, manage almost all of my projects and everything that's going on so her and I are on meetings like literally every single day talking about what's going on what we have to do who we have to talk to have meetings about our products our launches and lawyers and and uh, CPAs and all this stuff so and then we always talk with the products team so whoever are is working on our products that we create so uh, influencer Academy and FOCA we are also hiring another online business manager underneath her that's gonna be technically our project manager so things are gonna go through me, through Selena, through the project manager. Um, and then we're also gonna be outsourcing a couple of other things like customer service, um, managing some email stuff to a virtual assistant team, which is essentially just a group of people. They're in the Philippines and they get paid a little bit less there. So it's a little bit more cost efficient. A lot of people do this. If you guys read the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss, he does this, but outsourcing to a VA team to do little, little tasks that I don't necessarily have to be doing that take up a lot of time. Moving forward, we have the growth team. So the growth team is essentially the people that help our business grow. So that's gonna be email marketing and that's also gonna be paid advertisements. So I haven't really done paid advertisements on Facebook, on Instagram. Um, I did one or two for uh, Fitness Online Coaching Academy back when we launched, it went really well. But moving forward in 2018, we're gonna be focusing heavily on Facebook ads to just get Influencer Academy and FOCA out there and then my other products that I'm gonna be creating. Just because if you have the money to back up Facebook ads, which you don't necessarily need to get started with business. If you have that opportunity to utilize that, it does come back like tenfold for you moving forward and it helps you automate your business a little bit so it doesn't require me posting on social media or creating posts or creating content necessarily. It just kind of runs and does its thing and then, you know, moving forward. And then the email marketing team is just the people that will be in the future. I've done a lot of this myself up until this point. I do have someone named Dustin that was helping me with my email list he's awesome I'll link him below if you guys are interested if you haven't started your email list yet and you are a business please 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 do that I didn't start doing it until February of this year and it has been the number one best thing I have done this year aside from hiring a business coach but aside from that please start an email list it's really easy you can use MailChimp um, MailChimp is probably the easiest most cost-effective for you you can pay you don't have to pay for up to 2,000 users for MailChimp so just go ahead and get that started it's really easy and it's the only platform that you own you don't own Instagram we don't own YouTube YouTube changes for a lot of creators and a lot of creators got slashed with their payments because they're so heavily focused on YouTube and don't have an audience in their email so when you can email people and you can show up directly in their inbox you own that and that's gonna be the easiest way to directly get in touch with people so email marketing um, I have a team focused on that so I have Dustin and another company called Elevate United that I work with that we're redoing a lot of stuff for the FOCA relaunch in 2018 which is gonna be end of December early January for the FOCA relaunch so we'll be talking a lot about that soon moving forward we have the content creation team so obviously number one person in the content creation team is myself I do almost all of the content creation for a lot of things but moving forward in the future obviously you know I have a videographer I have Emma she edits my videos and she also films for me a lot of the time so if you ever see anything of me getting filmed that's Emma behind the camera I'll put her Instagram right here 
This is Emma, she's the best. She's also one of the main people that have inspired me to eat more meatless food options, more vegetarian options, vegan options. So I love Emma, she's the best. We also have a podcast producer and creator. So I don't have one person that helps me with my podcast. I have a couple different people. So previously I was doing blog posts myself and I was doing a lot of like things that go out for the podcast myself. So the podcast actually costs a decent bit of money and I haven't made Pretty much, I've been pretty much breaking even with the Bucci Radio podcast with my business, only because I haven't heavily focused on advertising on the podcast. I do have some, um, but not enough to like make a ton of money, but it's totally okay because I absolutely love the podcast. It's like my passion project, but I do have an editor where I pay between 160 and, 100 and 200 something or so dollars, depending on how long the podcast is per podcast that goes out. Um, someone that edits the whole podcast. And again, I could do it myself, but that's an hour and a half to three, two hours or so of time that I could be doing something more productive with my time as the CEO, content creator, business owner. Um, I also have someone that will create the blog posts and get the images together and create the images for the Instagram, create the images that we send to our guests, um, and then also create the blog posts and the email that goes out to you guys every single day. Again, because that is a system that is repeatable and scalable. So if it's repeatable and it's something really easily done by someone else, I don't necessarily have to do it. Creating the blog post requires, you know, re-listening to the episode, making sure all the timestamps are in place, making sure that all the quotes are there, taking the quotes and putting them on the Instagram post and making sure that that part of it is well run. It's repeatable. I can, it can happen again and again and again. It happens every Tuesday and every Thursday. So getting someone else on that to take care of that. So it just happens and goes out, makes my life easier. So all I have to do is actually get on the interviews with people, interview them, and then, you know, do my own episodes as well. And then do the pre-work for my own personal episodes. So that is how the podcast works. So that's part of the creation team. A copywriter is someone that writes for the purpose of people doing something. So I know that sounds a little funny and manipulative, but it's really not. It's actually a specific job that a lot of people have. And like, you know, a marketing agency is a copywriter is someone that writes the, the, like the emails and writes the landing pages and sales pages. And it's actually a really, really, really specific way to write. So I'm gonna insert a book right here. It's called, This Book Will Teach You How to Write Better. And it's super short, it's less than 100 pages, it's really easy to read, it's hysterical, and it's probably one of the best things you'll ever buy if you're interested in writing your own stuff for your own promotion, your own sales, your own marketing, and just writing in general. I obviously write really long Instagram captions and I never had this book before, I just, I did really well with writing in school and I love writing, I think writing is absolutely magical and I will always write long Instagram captions. I don't care what anybody says, Instagram captions and blog posts and emails and writing is magical, guys. Writing is amazing. Writing can make you change the way you think and feel about a certain topic or a certain person. If you send your mom, this is like an example in the book, if you send your mom a message saying how much you love her, you appreciate her, and then you send her the same exact message in the same exact envelope with the same exact stamp saying how much you resent her and she makes you miserable and all this stuff. Words mean something to people. So the way that you write will make a difference in your business. Moving forward, we have the client love team. So I like to call the client love team, you know, my coaches for the Influencer Academy, the customer service team that helps to make sure that everybody in FOCA gets their membership all set up, making sure that if some technical something happens that clients get responded to via email in an efficient time manner. So there's a customer service support team. Um, previously, my mom was taking over that job. She's also a part of the money team, which I'll get to in a second, but she was the main customer support person. We're now hiring a customer support agency, um, but they're actually the same VA team that, that also is gonna be doing like email management and a virtual assistant, stuff like that. Also client love team is also the Influencer Academy community coaches. So that's gonna be Carrie. And we're also hiring three more community coaches, specifically people who have already gone through the Influencer Academy. They are already really amazing coaches to their fitness coaching clients. And we're giving them a part-time position as an Influencer Academy coach, which is really exciting. So we can serve more people and get more people in the program without diluting the quality of the program. Because the most important thing to me as a coach and as a product creator is client success and client support. So that's really exciting for us. We're able to hire a couple new coaches, which I'm so pumped about. My program is gonna be so much more amazing with more people, more than just myself, obviously. It's great that I'm there and it's really great that I'm the person that's the main front of the course, but 
you know, once certain coaching pieces are made really, really clear, someone else can teach them and I can really focus on a certain part of the program, um, making sure people still feel supported, making sure that I am posting content to get people into the program, but also making sure the people in the program are having as much success as humanly possible. And sometimes you can't do it all on your own. So that's the client love team. Moving forward, we have the money team. So the money team is essentially just people that keep track of the money. So when you're making money in your business and you're self-employed, that means that you have to start keeping track of your money on your own because taxes don't come out of your paycheck on a weekly, bi-weekly or monthly basis. You have to pay them at the end of the year or quarterly um, as a business owner on your own. So I did just start with a bookkeeper and a CPA. Luckily, my CPA is my dad's cousin. I work with him at a discounted rate, which is really, really nice, but, and my mom is my bookkeeper. I do pay her, but she just started doing it because she was just like, you need help, Amanda. You need help to keep track of your money. So she is the bookkeeper and I do have a CPA, which just keeps track of all my taxes and focuses on helping me with my taxes at the end of the year. And then I also have a CFO, and this is someone that I hired a few months ago. And this is essentially a person that can not only make predictions about like, sorry, projections for the next year, but they can also help organize, you know, what your business is currently doing, how much it's making, what each thing is making you, where you should be um, investing, what your budget for this is gonna look like. You, this is something that you guys probably don't even have to worry about for quite a while, but this is a person that we kind of thought was very necessary just because of all of the different things I have going on. There's lots of different streams of income. There's lots of different business factors going on. So having one particular person say like, here is where you could probably give a little bit more to this part of the business. Here's probably where maybe you should push back and not expend as much as your of your energy, stuff like that. So that person has been really, really awesome. If you're a CFO, your job is amazing because you're really good at numbers and holy crap. What else do I do at the end of all this stuff that all these other people do? What I have realized and what uh, a lot of business people realize is that they specifically do stuff that only they can do. So no one else can make these videos for you guys. No one else can do the podcast interviews. No one else can create my Instagram content. No one else can take you know, the photos, no one else can be coaching on coaching calls aside from, you know, other people can be doing coaching calls for Influencer Academy, but I am still doing a lot of them. I absolutely love doing it. It's my favorite thing in the whole world. I love interacting with new clients. I love, 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 love seeing people succeed. And I love being the main person that's helping them succeed. So that's my main thing. I do want to move on and, you know, start helping a little bit more experienced clients in the future. But for right now, I love just helping people who are just getting started with their business inside of the Influencer Academy and with FOCA, um, doing a lot of Facebook Lives and Zoom calls with other students to make sure that they're on the right track and they're on the right path and they're getting the success that they need and they're getting all their questions and support needs answered. And that's gonna be the structure of my business. So this video is not created to tell you to go create all of these things and it's not created to make you feel bad that you don't have all these things in place again. I have invested very heavily into my business this year. My lifestyle hasn't changed literally almost at all, aside from like, I went on a nice vacation this year in July, which was really nice. But aside from that, everything that I've made has gone directly back into my business with all of these different people that I've hired, different teams, different functionalities. So the business can just get really organized, efficient, productive, systematized. So moving forward, I can do new things, create new things and have more mental space in my head to create. And I just wanted to make sure that I kind of created this video for you guys to show you guys what's possible. Um, obviously you have to have like the bandwidth and like the money to invest in something. But if you were going to invest in one thing right now, I would invest in either some sort of assistant or someone who's incredibly smart, who you can actually pay. I prefer to pay more for someone who's really, really good at what they do versus someone who isn't necessarily as good at what they do and just as kind of following orders, I would prefer to hire someone that already knows what the orders should be like Selena. And she has experience with company managing, um, online business management, managing, just regular business managing for another company that she worked with and other clients that she works with. And she already knew what the holes were in my business and all these things were implemented because, primarily because of her. So moving forward, 
This is just a really great testament to show what you guys could possibly be doing with your businesses in the future. Please never limit yourself to just what you're doing. Make sure you guys are thinking big, thinking ahead, um, being realistic, of course, with your goals, being realistic with your investments, who you invest in, when you invest in it, um, whether it's something that's gonna help your business be more efficient, whether it's gonna be a person or an employee or a contractor that's gonna help your business run better, more smoothly, so you can focus on the things that you need to be focusing on and less so on the things that can be repeatable, scalable, or be done by somebody else. That was probably the biggest thing that I learned this year, um, just based on, you know, in the beginning of the year, I had nobody on my team. I had none of this stuff, literally none of it. And I wasn't doing any of the things that I'm doing right now. And it's not to say that you can't be successful without a team and you can just be a solopreneur and be your own person, but there's only so much growth and bandwidth that you can have just on your own. So I highly encourage you guys to take this video with a grain of salt, think about it and take what, what applies to your life specifically and really just crush it with your own life um, and with your own business. And I hope that this helps and I think that's gonna cover it. So thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will catch you in the next one.